Ladies and gentlemen, the New York City Half Marathon featuring Kenanisa Bekele. Oh my goodness me, I can't believe it's finally upon us. Before we get started, subscribe if you are new to stay up to date with all of the latest videos and leave a like on today's video to show your support. So guys, Kenanisa Bekele went into this race with the goal of trying to get the Veterans Male World Record and also have a season opener to see how his fitness really was for the London Marathon, which he will be racing next month. Also be covering that here on this channel, he's up against Cam Wara and other top level athletes. So right off the bat, look at this. We've got Kip Chimba, we've got Bekele, and we've got Talib. Now this is something that I really can't believe. Bekele went out with intent. I mean, look at this. He is basically going straight to the front and leading from the very start with no fear whatsoever. I personally think this is a combination of anxiety, pre-race nerves, but also the months of training that he's put in gave him confidence. But let's keep watching and see how this race ends up going. So we've got Kip Chumba at the very front here, and a lot of these athletes, including Talby, also looking very, very strong. Now Talby decided to take this race from the lead at 10 minutes in. He realized that the pace had slowed way too much and he wanted to start really pushing on. So initially, Talby put his foot down and Kip Chumba and three other athletes came with them. However, unfortunately, Bekele wasn't one of those athletes in this breakaway group. Now the breakaway group weren't running particularly fast at all. They weren't even running sub one hour pace. And I've come to realize that the New York City half marathon is actually a very testing half marathon course with some pretty tricky hills, not only uphills, but also downhills. So Talib was doing his best to now try and stay relaxed on the front of this lead group. The goal here I'm assuming was to try and wear out Kip Chumba who was the favourite in this race with the fastest personal best time of well under one hour. So here we have Kip Jumba, the 10k mark they went through in 28.38, which in my opinion is not very fast. However, for some of these athletes, it is very fast. Fourth place and then fifth place is nowhere to be seen. I can't see Bikaili anywhere, which is really disappointing me. But hopefully, soon he could actually kind of grab onto this group and maybe speed up. As in the past, Bekele has been known to increase his pace and also pace himself very well during these races. Talib is a Moroccan runner who I believe was the second fastest in this field, or he may have been the third or fourth. Now he was doing a good job of really breaking down these Kenyans and Ethiopians, I believe that he was going for the win here and he tried to break them down at around the 10k mark after they went through in around 28 and a half minutes. However, what Talbi was doing wasn't enough and it seemed to me that Kip Chumba was really just so relaxed at this pace that he was going to kick at any second. So we're now 32 to 33 minutes into the race. We are around 7 miles in and the lead group is now three athletes. They have dropped one of the Ethiopians off the back completely. He's nowhere to be seen. Now, at this point, we are 38 minutes into the race, and we can see that Kipchumba is dropping Talbi and is showing him who is boss. I don't know who's going to win this race, as again, we're only eight miles into it, and there is still a good amount of miles left. We're talking around four or five miles until the finish. So one of these athletes needs to really figure out when they're going to put their foot down as Talby and Kip Chumba were constantly changing between who leads. In my opinion right now, Talby looks like the stronger runner. If you notice, his arm carriage is a lot more aggressive. However, Kip Chumba does seem to have that really powerful look where he's kind of uh, swaying from side to side but his core is rock solid and it's holding him together. Here we go again, another kick from Talby, which once again unfortunately wasn't doing any damage to Kip Chumba. This was making the race really exciting though, as they went through the 15k mark 
in just over 42 minutes. Talby started to look like he was really struggling at this point, and those surges were starting to pay kind of a, their dues, shall we say. He had definitely started to seriously suffer. If you look at his face here, I mean, the expressions are pain, uh, really, really disappointed that his surges haven't managed to break everyone. Now, Talby did a great job. He broke everyone in the race except for Kipchumba. Kenanisa Bekele was around about 7th place at this point in the race, operating at a pace of 103, which I have no idea what's happened to him, but uh, very, very bad. I had some of his fans commenting that he would run a an official all ages world record, which would be <laughs> well under 58 minutes. I have no idea how on earth Bekele has ended up in this situation. He went out so hard as if he was in a dominant position. The first 5k and 10k weren't blisteringly quick, so it wasn't as if they all burnt each other out. Uh, to give you an example, Talby wouldn't have been surging if the race was fast from the beginning because Talby isn't necessarily the best runner in this field. However, he's clearly had a massive breakthrough as here, 50 minutes in, he was still leading the way. It wasn't until the 53rd minute that Kipchumba decided to finally put his foot down and really break away from Talby. As you can see, the lead is over 400 meters, and Kipchumba managed to put around a whole minute between himself and the second place athlete. To me, that was impressive. I think that Kipchumba probably managed to run a 420 mile or possibly even faster. I wasn't keeping track of the live splits, but right now Kipchumba's probably happy just to be sprinting away with the win today at this race. So Kipchumba came for the win in 1 hour 23 unofficial, based on my observations, he seemed very happy. He won first place prize, then we had Talbi come in, then a couple of the Ethiopians, and we're going to take a look over the results in a minute regarding Kenanisa Bekele, but a bit of a disappointing race for Talbi and also Bekele, because I think that although Talbi looks happy now, I think he deserved the win. I mean, he ran this race like a true warrior, he pushed them all through to the finish, he did multiple aggressive surges, he's a very kind and respectful runner. And here is Kipchumba, I believe, having his post-race commentaries and criticisms with the news reporters. And uh, this is a really, really, really strong athlete here, who in my opinion has a bright future in the Olympics, possibly the London Marathon, Berlin Marathon. So we'll keep an eye out for him. I think Kipchumba has been running very well lately. However, the 1 at 25 official isn't great. This is his half debut at the New York City Half Marathon, so I guess that's kind of a special occasion for him and something that a lot of us would celebrate him for doing, especially winning the race if he's not familiar with the course. In the past, some big names who have run this course are Mo Farah, we also have Joshua Cheptegei, Jacob Kipolimo. There are many top athletes that use this course as a way of building strength and stamina for the marathon distance. I myself have never personally run the New York City Art Marathon. However, from my friends and my fans who watch my channel, I have heard that the course itself isn't ideal for a fast time. I don't know how true that is, but a lot of people have been telling me that the course is actually very difficult regarding lots of hills, turns, and downhills, which can sometimes damage your quads and make them really ache big time, like the ones at the Boston Marathon at the very first few miles that kill everyone's quads so bad. So here are the results. We had Ebel Kipchumba in 1 hour 25 minutes, which was an average of 437 per mile. And unfortunately, Kenanisa Bekele finished in 7th place with a time of 1 hour 3 minutes and 59 seconds. I have no idea what happened there. He didn't go out too fast. I mean, maybe his first 400 meter was too fast, but I can't see how he'd be so stupid to end up bonking over the first 400 meters in a half marathon. That's silly. That's the kind of stuff a 1500 meter runner would do or an 800 meter runner. Not a half marathon runner as experienced as himself. So I tried to do a bit more research, see if there's a reason why Bikeli ran so badly. Everyone was saying how good shape he was in. He's been going for multiple veteran world records. He's been training for a 202 marathon. 
He's been trying to get under the one hour for the half marathon in order to get a personal record and also to break Haile Gebre Selassie's veteran 40 world record, which I brought up in yesterday's video. I was really disappointed because when I first saw him start the race over the first like four to 800 meters, I was like, oh my goodness, let's go. This is going to be so, so fun, you guys. But after like five minutes, he was nowhere to be seen. And then by the 10 minute mark, he had already been dropped by everyone. So unless I miss one of the splits and there somehow was a crazy fast one kilometer somewhere, it doesn't make any sense what happened to Pekeli. Unfortunately, as elite runners, every day can't be your best day. There are a number of factors that may have affected Kenanita Bekele, for example the food, his sleep cycle, the city air and pollution, the mindset, the nerves, uh, illnesses, flu, infection, stomach issues. There are so many things that can affect an elite runner's performance that it would be near impossible to even come up with a theory in today's video without Bekele commenting on it or posting a reason on his social media. As I've said in the past, Bekele isn't the best at posting to social media and updating his fans, which is disappointing, but you know, some people don't like using social media that often, and some people do. However, when you're at this level, you kind of need to use social media, because otherwise you're going to lose fans, you're going to lose exposure and popularity and respect. And I believe that someone needs to post more active in his Instagrams and his social media pages, and that way he would get more fans, more followers, and also we'd be able to know what's happening. Because I feel like I'm in the dark when it comes to Bikadi's training and feelings and achievements and, you know, his business and family life. I get that he likes his privacy, but unfortunately, to a certain level, when you're a celebrity, you don't really have any privacy. Obviously, other than your house and your family or your businesses that you own, everything else a lot of your followers and fans want to know about because they like you as a person, they get motivation from you. And I think, you know, Bekele in that sense has let his fans down. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of you may think that's harsh to say, but in the age of technology, Bekele's really struggled to stay up to date. He comes from an era where there really weren't smartphones and during his world record running times back in 2007 and 2008, you know, really, Wi-Fi wasn't a massive thing. It wasn't in everyone's home. The internet was something connected to the landline phone lines. And you had to kind of turn the phone on just to uh, get on your stupid box looking computer with Microsoft. So <laughs> overall, I know we've come from a different generation, but I feel like he needs to try harder with posting to social media to keep us all updated. Kind of like Kipchoge. It'd be really good if he did that. And I would love that so much. Well guys, that was a New York City half marathon, and uh, you know, not every day is Bekele's day. He is going at London in April in a couple of weeks time, so if you want to watch that race, be sure to hit subscribe on this channel and join me as I'll be covering the news leading up to it and also the race itself. It is hard to believe though that he barely averaged sub 5 minutes per mile for 13 miles. After having run a 2.04 at Valencia, he ran a pace of basically 2.08 today for only a half marathon. That's very worrying. I don't care how hilly the course is, that's very bad. I'm not going to lie and say, oh, he's okay, it's just one off. The problem is, guys, is sometimes athletes will get affected by their age and some of them turn to denial where they can't accept they need to retire. So th there's a lot of issues here that we need to address and we need to pray that Bekele gets fit and healthy for London and has a good performance. Otherwise, this could be the end of his career and he may drop out the Olympics. Thanks for watching. This is The Runner and guys, I'll catch you in tomorrow's video.